welcome. Because of the te technical difficulties I had earlier when I went live, I decided to re-record the video and actually add the entire message to it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus drew ne himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us. It is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, gave it to them. But that their eyes were opened and they recognized Jesus, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us when he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures for us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found him, found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, the Lord has truly been raised, and he has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted to them what had taken place on the way, and how it was made known to them in the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. I chose the Emmaus story because it has so much to say to us about what's happening in our world today and, and what we need to do. The disciples did not recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread. They recognized him in the breaking of the bread, but they did not recognize him as he's walking with them. And the reason I believe it happened was they were so filled with grief and anxiety and worry. And that was preventing them from seeing him right with them. And for us, how many of us are filled with stress and anxiety, worrying about what's happening, worrying about whether we're going to stay healthy or, or our world or when things will get back to normal. And Jesus is right there with us in our midst. And he's there to help us. Or do we recognize him? And I think a couple ways that help us recognizing him is one, to look for the good that other people are doing. Look for the good that's happening in the world. Also, the scriptures. Were not our hearts burning for us as he spoke to us and opened up the scriptures for us? Yes, our hearts can also burn. Because we need to pray to the Holy Spirit to guide us as we read the scriptures. And it's important for us to read them. And where do you start? I would strongly suggest the resurrection stories. Most of those stories are read during Easter week. So if you don't go to daily communion, you miss most of them. So take them up. Read them. Think about them. Reflect upon them. Let them touch your heart. Let them give you hope. Then, another place you might want to go is to the letters of St. Peter in the New Testament, and then the letters of St. John. There are some wonderful apps that you can go to, and I don't know if you can read this, and maybe not, but these apps and websites are wonderful. Pray as you go. That's the first one. Pray as you go. And it's an audio um, app, so you listen to the readings as well as reflection. And those are connected with the readings that are being celebrated 
in the church at man that day. Second one is three-minute retreat. And it's the number three, then minute retreat. These are ones that you read, and they are about any scripture. They're not directly connected to the man. Other websites are the USCCB.org, which stands for United States Catholic Conference Bishops.org. So it's USCCB.org. They have the readings for the Mass that you can read, or you can click on an audio file, or you can click on a video meditation. And of course, don't forget our own parish webpage, 14hh.org. Once again, the number is 14 and then hh.org which is a great um, website and has many wonderful resources. So always check that out. Praying with the scriptures is so important. Praying with each other is also very important. So pray with others over the phone. Pray with others that are nearby. Not too close. Remember, still keeping your social distancing. But you can do that. You can also, in a special way, send a card, send a note. Um, think about creative ways. One of the parishioners told me the other day about her grandchildren coming and they literally decorated her whole driveway with chalk drawings. And then she would later, if they had left, gone out to look at them. I mean, there's so many beautiful ways that we can try to keep on celebrating each other. But remember, in a special way in your prayers, to pray for all those who are fighting the coronavirus, whether they have it, or whether they're on the other side as physicians or researchers or doctors and nurses. Pray for all those who are struggling with fatigue at this point in their life. Pray for all those who don't realize the danger and not following the rules. The world needs prayers. 185 countries approximately, have been affected by it. There's only like 195 countries in the entire world. So the world is crying out. And, and Jesus, in today's gospel that I just proclaimed for you, he sat and he prayed with them. He prayed with them, and then he broke the bread. And then they recognized him. We need to pray with Jesus for our world. Another time of remembering that is if you think about the agony in the garden. Jesus says to his apostles, pray with me. Stay here and pray. And we're drawing your prayers with my prayers. They're so important tonight. I think he's saying that to us right now. Drawing your prayers with my prayers. You got to do this for the world. We have to make that sacrifice. So it's not just about staying in. It's how we're growing closer to the Lord and how through our prayers and our actions are we touching our world with God's healing. We will be live casting the Holy Tritium services tonight, Thursday, 7 p.m., Good Friday, 3 p.m., and then Holy Saturday we'll be doing the vigil at 7.30 p.m., and then Easter Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. The church will remain closed and locked for the next couple of weeks, at least into April 20th. It saddens me to say that, because I know a lot of you want to come, but we need the respect for it has to be done for the well-being of others. And God is just as much in your house, especially when you're reading the scriptures, as he is here in the church. His real presence is in his word, is just as much as it's in his body and blood. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask you in a very special way 
to open our eyes to see that Christ is with us, among us, and working with us to help us and our world. Open our ears to hear his voice and to follow him more clearly. Open up our hearts to know him well. We ask in a special way that our hearts will become more loving, more like the heart of your son. And our lives will touch the world. And even as we make these sacrifices, we know that you're with us. We ask you to bless us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your head and pray for God's blessing. Almighty God, to send forth your blessing upon our world. Help strengthen us. Help support us. Help guide us. We ask these blessings to be fulfilled and to be granted through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I and the staff of 14 Holy Helpers want to wish you in a very, very special way a blessed Easter. Mary was filled with tremendous joy after all the sorrow she suffered watching her son die, that her joy was far greater as she knew her son was alive. May that joy be yours. And I ask in a special way that Jesus, Mary, and Joseph will bless your family and all families and our human family and create all of us in their loving arms. I ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.